Today is the culmination of a year of work from a small but very crazy and passionate team. I was gonna crack another Budweiser in celebration here, but I need to get through recording about a million more videos. So not today, maybe tomorrow. But as of today, Payload has completely reinvented the headless CMS and has solved the headaches that you might come across when running headless infrastructure. Payload is the only Next.js CMS in a way that no other CMS can even come close to. It installs completely in your app folder without any third-party SaaS services. No free trials, no free tier, no subscriptions. It's yours. And this is the definition of open source. Honestly, it's an overdue evolution of how projects both large and small think about how to connect their content to their presentation layers. This release is about more than just moving to be the first Next.js CMS though. Every single touch point of payload has been significantly improved, slimmed down, optimized, and just in general become razor sharp. We launched 3.0, the beta, back in April, and since then, the amount of community adoption, testing, feedback, it's completely blown us away. I get a little bit emotional thinking about it. It feels surreal to work on something so hard and for so long that so many people are interested in. Our community has kept up with our manic beta breaking changes one after another and instantly helped us spot areas of improvement or regressions or new feature ideas all with detailed reproductions and detailed feedback. And none of you get paid for this. You take time out of your own day to help this project. And that is the spirit of open source. We realize that we do not take it for granted. And your commitment to this project is what drives us to do the best work we can. So seriously, thank you. And let's keep it going. Here's a quick recap of all the structural changes we've made in Payload 3.0. And the first one is probably obvious at this point. We are now Next.js native, but I cannot overstress how important this is enough. Payload now installs fully in any Next.js app router open source. And it's not just the admin panel that you're plopping into your app folder, it's the full backend as well. No free trials, no free tiers necessary. Everything is yours in your app folder. And then you can deploy anywhere you want. You can deploy on serverless for sell for free. You can deploy on a container. You can do whatever you want. It's yours. And we have built payload. We've engineered everything to work perfectly with all Next.js features. So we are truly native to the platform. And what this allows you to do is that you no longer have to have a separate front and back end. If you're using Next for your front end, we basically just gave a head back to the headless CMS. And Next.js is the head. All the power of templating and rendering and dynamic components is yours inside of Payload to express your content however you want. And the whole idea of deploying a separate CMS and then a separate front end is just out the window unless you want to, which you can still do. But the important part is that if you want to, you can connect the two again. And another big thing we did today is that we've marked Postgres and Lexical as stable. These two packages have been put through the ringer over the last year, and we feel very comfortable now being able to mark them as stable. But one, th one cool thing that we've also been able to do is ship SQLite and Vercel Postgres database adapters, and they use the exact same code that the Postgres adapter does, thanks to Drizzle. All three of those use the same code. And so we can mark SQLite as stable, and we can mark Vercel Postgres as stable as well, all in one shot. The next thing that we did, and maybe this is my favorite, is that we've significantly overhauled and simplified the way that Payload exports anything that it does. So you might want to import a utility from Payload or a type or whatever. Chances are now it's just import whatever from Payload. If you want to import a Payload component to be able to reuse it in your UI, import button from payload slash UI. Boom, done. It's just flat and simple. And another thing we completely converted over to ESM, which was a lot of fun. I love Node. And we're trying to push it forward a little bit. I think that most packages should be moving to ESM, but that's done. That was fun. Uh, big important thing is that you can use the payload local API in server components and in server functions to query and mutate your data in payload. And this goes directly to your database. 
This is the fastest way to manage data inside of a Next.js app. It's not going to a third-party API, which then goes to the database. It goes straight to the database in server components and server functions. You can use them anywhere. It's beautiful. We're the only CMS that supports that. And the last thing, and a big one, is that Payload is now significantly more portable, meaning that if you are going to use Astro or SvelteKit or Remix for your front end, you can import Payload and use it. Payload works in any node environment. It's been significantly streamlined and uh, modernized. If you install Payload in Remix, it's not gonna come with any of the overhead of the Payload admin panel or its REST API or its GraphQL engine. It's tiny. It only has 27 dependencies and that's down from 88 with 2.0. Payload works in any node environment. And if you wanna use that to query your data separately, go for it. But these are just the big architectural changes that we made, and there's a lot more. Everything that I just showed is ready for production, but we've also shipped a ton of new features based on community and enterprise customer feedback, which all go live today as well. I love that. The community is shaping our roadmap. We're building what you tell us to build, and that's the best way to build a product. Everything goes live today. Okay. Now it's time for a turbo round of all the new features that we've shipped. First one, join field. You can now express significantly more complex database architectures with Payload's join field. What I'm showing you here is a movies collection that has a director relationship. In the database, this is a foreign key to the director's table. But if I go over to directors, I can now surface all the movies that a given director has directed with the join field. So I'm outputting all of Denis' movies here, just right in line, and this is extremely performant. It works on the database level, and surprise, surprise, what we do in the background is just make a join, and you get all this data without having to query separately. The next big database feature is the select and populate APIs, which are very, very powerful and will help to significantly optimize your querying that you perform in payload. So here you can see I have a custom route handler and I'm using select title true so that when I query movies, I only get the title field. You can see this is all typed. It works very, very strongly across all APIs. And by selecting title, I can reduce the amount of JSON that is output from the browser significantly. Now, the other side of this is default populate. So let's say I want the director true as well. And you can see that every time payload will populate the director, but I've only chosen to populate the full name when we populate a director to cut down on the JSON that gets queried. This works at the database level, it's not superficial at all. But so when I query directors, you can see default populate is a new parameter that the collection config takes. And you can say, hey, when payload populates a director, only accept these fields. And then, of course, I can override that as well on a query by query basis. So I can say populate directors and let's say I want the full name true. And then let's say I also want like latest movie true. Boom. Go back over here. Refresh. And now I get their latest movie as well. So I can override it on a query by query basis. But with this, you can significantly optimize your queries and make everything a lot faster. Okay, now let's look at some editor features. So Lexical, as I mentioned, is now stable, but we've added a bunch of new features to improve the editor experience and make customizing Lexical significantly easier. So let's say like, hello, here is some content. And what if you wanted to have like an inline reference to like a car price or something dynamic that like, populated data from a third-party API or something. We now have inline blocks, which you can add directly into Lexical, just like that. And then I can edit this block, and I can change, like, let's say I want to reference the McLaren F1 car price. Boom. It's right in line, hello, right in the middle of a sentence. And you can also do the same thing with block-level components. So let's say I wanted to add a banner. Let's say our design system had a banner in the rich text. Boom. Banner. Let's do type warning. This is too cool, watch out. And you can customize Lexical by just adding these components and it's very, very easy to do. You don't have to know how Lexical works, but you can add custom components for your editors. This is how much code it took to do that. Here's the banner, this is the same block as anywhere used inside of Payload. Two fields, type and content, and then that references this right here. I can remove that block if I want, boom, add another one, banner. 
And then the inline block is the same idea. It's a block and you can specify the fields. So if you wanted to have like a translated key or a dynamic reference or something like that, do it right there. And all of this works seamlessly. So you can override these entire components with your own preview components and then render your own edit button that pops out into a drawer so they can edit it. Imagine if you had like a YouTube embed that you wanted to reference right in the rich text here to preview to your editors. You can now do that without having to customize Lexical at all. So Lexical has gotten significantly more customizable and powerful without complex dev involved on the back end. This is one of the largest new features that Payload has launched with 3.0 and Payload now gives you everything you need for a fully functional jobs queue, which is a common feature of any application framework like Laravel or Rails, where you wanna defer a task to be run separately from the main APIs in a non-blocking way, or maybe in a scheduled way like nightly or publish this document in the future at this time or whatever you wanna do. This feature is way too large for me to go through completely in this um, quick demo here, but the basic concept is that we have tasks, which are function definitions. We have workflows where you can define multiple tasks in a row in a durable way so that if one task fails, it will pick back up on the next task. And then you can queue jobs in the payload local API just by like in a hook, let's say, when this movie changes, I wanna sync the data somewhere. And then you can have different queues. So let's say you wanted to have one queue that runs every five minutes, but then you wanna have another queue that runs nightly as like a synchronization or something. The way that this works in the config is right here. So we've got a new property on the config called jobs. You can define access control, so who can run jobs and who cannot. And then you define all of your tasks, and then you can optionally define workflows to join up a couple of these tasks. So a task is just a fully typed TypeScript interface. You give it a slug, you give it the arguments that this task should accept in a typed way, you give it the output that the task should return on success, and then you define the handler, which is the logic that will actually run inside of this task. Here's another one, like updating movies, updating directors, and then I can join these together with a workflow that first runs the sync movie task, and if this fails, it will pick back up and run here. But if this one succeeds, then it will go to the next one and it won't rerun this first one. So all of this comes out of the box with Payload now. It's very powerful. And then you can use things like Vercel Cron or any type of Cron to run your jobs. And it all works seamlessly with Payload's local API. As of today, Payload now supports bulk upload and has many true for our upload field, which allows you to create galleries and upload many things all at once. So let's take a look at that quick. Let's create new, let's select some files. Let's select four of them, bam. We get this new UI that allows us to select multiple files and click save, and all of them are uploaded at once into the library and then they're referenced in the same images um, field. So if you're familiar with Payload and you've been using it for a while, we've had the upload field for a while, but now it supports has many true, which can be dragged and dropped and you can add additional ones. And it works really, really well with bulk upload. This is all ready to go. So we've had live preview since 2.0, but as of today, it's being marked stable and we've added support for server components live preview. Whereas before, Live Preview only worked if you had a client-side uh, rendering tactic, but now you can use server components for the entirety of your front end, and Payload's Live Preview still works. So I can go here and change hello, and I can see my changes exactly as I'm working here. I can drag and drop these buttons into different orders. I can remove a button. Everything instantly works. And what you're seeing over here is our brand new website template, which is built to showcase all of the modern features of Next.js and Payload, including server-side live preview with server components. The front end is built completely with Tailwind and it's all server components. So here's that page. You can see we're getting payload, we're passing it to config, and then we're querying for pages, and we're returning the page, and the page is completely typed. So all these server components work perfectly with payload's live preview, and the website template is a good place to get started because it shows you how to wire all of this up so that your editors get a really nice experience and they can see what they're doing as they edit their content. In addition to the big new features and the big architectural changes, We've also shipped a ton of improvements across the board, and I gotta go through these quick. So number one, 
GraphQL has been removed from payload. It is now only going to start up if you are using it, which really speeds up payloads initialization across the board. Number two, we use React Compiler before we ship our code to you, which is instant performance wins for everyone that uses payload. Insane. I can't even believe it. Now you can run migrations in production on init rather than in CI because especially enterprises don't have access to their database connection string in CI. So now we made a function to be able to execute your migrations right there. Upload thing got its own storage adapter. Theo's company called Upload Thing. You can use that in conjunction with payloads file storage. We have new local API operations that we use internally to dramatically optimize the overhead of all the things that the admin panel needs to know about. So this is a performance win at the end of the day. You can now use the base list filter collection option to restrict which documents appear in a list view, which is helpful for multi-tenant or localized content where you don't have pages localized in all locales, but only in some locales. A lot of people thought that Lexical was just too cool without a toolbar, so now we have a fixed toolbar that you can enable. We've optimized the way that relational databases store uh, relations. So if it's a simple relation, it will just be an ID column, just like normal, just like you would expect. Postgres point field is now supported. So Postgres now supports everything that MongoDB supports. You can also query deeply on Postgres um, in rich text and JSON fields. You can customize your drizzle schema by passing your own drizzle schema into payload, and then we won't harvest it for our own purposes. Fully typed I18N, so you get the T function, you can um, use that to output translated strings, and it's fully typed now. You can log in with username rather than email if you'd like. There's a way easier pattern for defining custom component props. Both server props and client props are super easy now. We have an email adapter pattern that includes the launch of a resend email adapter, which you can use if you want to maybe deploy on the Edge or Cloudflare in the future where NodeMailer wouldn't be supported. We've heavily optimized the shape of the access endpoint, which basically truncates itself and reduces the amount of JSON that the admin panel needs to download. You can sort by multiple fields, pretty self-explanatory. MongoDB uh, now saves object IDs for relationships, which this is just cleaning up our past mistakes basically, but now it's good. You can lock documents. So when you edit one, you can lock it and nobody else can get there. They have to kick you out. Not found and forbidden are no longer actual errors in your error logs. Those are just going to be info, so your logs will thank us. Massive toast notifications, everyone complained about that. Finally, Vercel complained about it, and they were right. So we swapped it out for Sonner, which is a huge improvement. Now we have true virtual fields. So you can just add virtual true to any field, and it will act as a virtual field without having to use access control or hooks to clean up the data before it gets saved. You can customize file names before files are uploaded. If you want to sanitize or customize them, go for it. Localized fields are now indicated in the admin panel, so you can tell at a glance which fields are localized and which ones aren't. All payload CSS is now scoped to a CSS layer, which makes it so that you can override payload styles easier. Custom CSS, the, the stuff that you write, now automatically has the highest possible specificity, so it's easier to override payload styles. You can duplicate and delete from drawers. You can publish individual locales. So say you have six locales to publish and you only want to publish French. Now you can do that. You have more control over the log level, so you can determine which types of errors come through at which level. And that was pretty quick. I think that's as fast as I could do it. I tried to get this video as short as I could. What are we at, 20 minutes? There's just so much to cover. I didn't even scratch the surface. There's so many additional bug fixes and just miscellaneous improvements that I can't possibly go through all of it. This release got a lot bigger than any of us anticipated, and we ended up shipping a lot of new features and just in general polish to payload. And that would not have been possible without our community helping us test and pushing through the beta breaking changes one after another. But at this point, everything is stable, and there are no more breaking changes as long as we are on 3.0. 4.0 will come at some point, and there's a lot of really exciting stuff on our roadmap between now and then. 4.0 will probably see a design evolution of the admin panel, just a modernization, adding more capabilities to customize and extend all kinds of stuff. And it will also include a lot more features. And I'm excited to see what everyone builds with Payload 3.0, and please let us know what you think when you try it.
and we hope to see you around Discord and on GitHub. But thank you, and we'll see you soon.